What's going on guys, it's Blake here, and if you clicked into this video, you're looking to know how sneaker bots specifically ruined the sneaker industry, not at the consumer level necessarily, but the big entity level. Now we're gonna talk about that in a second, and it's really been centered around a recent pickup for the Off-White collection in which a lot of people are complaining about bots, and this is not a bots are ruining sneakers video. Everyone talks about that, it's kind of common sense now. This is getting a little bit deeper, but we'll show you the shoes and some other cool stuff, and I'll narrate that thought process. If you guys are ready, let's go. We did get some new cause pickups we'll do a video on. And look at this, Russell Athletics Made in USA, 1989. Amazing, amazing piece. If you guys haven't checked out the shop, you definitely can. So if you're like me, you spent your afternoon with the off-white sneakers hitting the submit order over and over and over and over again. And I hit it enough times to get the ugly stepchild of the off-white collection, the Blazer. Not all that's been on sale, had no interest, no matter what they did with it, till the off-white came in. I think they just let me win this one for pity. So you're wondering, how did sneaker bots, like the ones that are used to, you know, refresh sneakers app or add stuff to cart, proxy services, how did they ruin the sneaker industry at the entity level, so the big higher ups, Nike, Jordan. Now we've talked about how everything has gone on sale recently. We've seen really steep discounts, we've seen oversupply, we've seen mixed matches with prices. Now how did that happen? Yes, you might be saying. Of course sneakerhead popularity really, really, really took off and then died back down. But if you're gonna be doing buys based on big data, this is how sneaker bots ruined it at the corporate level. So the way most bots work is they spoof as if you're a unique user. This is done to get multiple pairs, you do a different IP address, you run a proxy. I don't have to get into it, but one person, right, might be running 50 different requests to purchase one sneaker. Even though they're just one person and they don't have the intent of wanting it to keep, they have the intent of wanting it to sell. Now there's nothing wrong with it, that's a business. But when Nike and these companies look and they see all these requests for people to buy, they assume an inflated demand that is actually not there. That demand of one person is counted 20, 30, 40, 50 times. So now, back when Jordan Retros were reselling, which was a thing, right? We see them, you know, now we're just passing on everything, even like coveted releases that come out or coveted colorways, there's always way too many. Back in the day, people would be hitting you know, requests for hundreds of pairs because you could flip them for 40 bucks and if you're making hundreds of pairs, you can really scale that up with a sneaker bot. Nike sees that, they're like, wow, look at all these customers. Even though it's one reseller is representing hundreds of customers in their eyes based on their data, and now here we are. Way too much of fucking everything and it's mostly because of sneaker bot requests and people not sifting through that data and in doing so, assuming that the demand was far greater than it actually was. So you guys wanted to know, that's my two cents. Let me know if you were able to pick up anything from the Off-White collection. Like I said, I really want the Jordan 1s, so those are probably, uh, my pair of these are 100% getting sold uh, to go towards that. And like I said, if you haven't checked out some of my recent videos, go back and do that. Uh, we do business e mixes of conversation into videos all the time. So hopefully you enjoyed. T-Blake signing out. Peace, guys.